Hey Doug, I think after all of this, you should change the name of your company from Amazing Facts to Amazing Fiction. I'm a graphic designer by trade. I'll do it for you for free. At least then people would know what they're getting into. What's up YouTube? Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna get back into the video that we reviewed last time of our friend Doug Batchelor. Yet again, there are more lies that we have to address. Adventist, you need to be honest about this. In the age of the internet, you cannot continue hiding behind word games and semantics. We're going to fact check these things and we're going to educate Christians on what you guys teach and believe. So. If content like this interests you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you can be notified when content like this is uploaded. Just like last time, I'm gonna play Doug's portion first, then we're gonna get into the primary sources. We have quite a few sources to look at today, so brace yourself, buckle up, and let's get into it. And the third thing they say that, and I hear this all the time, that we put Ellen White on an equal or a higher plane with the Bible, or we must interpret the Bible through Ellen White. That is categorically not true. Now, you know, let me just say something. Whenever you're trying to find out what the truth is, and you're evaluating what a church believes, um, I've seen this before where, you know, there'll be some disaster in a neighborhood, a hurricane will go through, and the news crew will come in, and they jump out of their truck, and they take the microphone, and they walk over to someone who's standing on the street, and all the neighbors are looking, they're going, oh, please, don't interview him. Do not give the microphone to that guy. That is the village idiot. Every church, especially a church that's got millions of believers, if you want to take a letter or writing or an email post and interview one person and say, this is what they believe, that's not fair. If you want to find out what a church believes, go to what the Bible says and go to what their official teachings are. And so if you look at the official teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we do not believe that the writings of Ellen White are on an equal plane, higher, or that the Bible should be interpreted through the writings of Ellen White. Oh, please, you are lying through your teeth, dude. You know it, I know it, and deep down, every Adventist knows it. I accept your challenge, Doug. We're gonna go to multiple of your own sources, and I think after doing this, the viewing audience is gonna see, no, you're the village idiot, because only an idiot would say this, knowing what's online, for people to then fact check you against. We're gonna go to their fundamental beliefs, we're gonna go to an article on their own website, multiple Ellen White quotes, and then cap it off with a Sabbath school quarterly. Is that enough of your own sources, Doug? With that said, let's get into the first source. All right, so we're here in fundamental belief number 18, and look at what it says. The scriptures testify that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. This gift is an identifying mark of the remnant church, and we believe it was manifested in the ministry of Ellen G. White. Her writings speak with prophetic authority and provide comfort, guidance, instruction, and correction to the church. But then they tack on, they also make clear that the Bible is the standard by which all teaching and experience must be tested. So they use the language of 2 Timothy 3, 16, and 17, and equate it to the writings of Ellen G. White, which is a passage referring to scripture. Interesting, they even put it in the footnotes here as one of the proof texts, 2 Timothy 3, 16, and 17. But remember folks, they don't equate Ellen White's writings with the Bible. Now let's look at an article on their own website. I'll put the link to all this in the description down below. This article is called Methods of Bible Study, and at one of the points down the page, number 12, it says, Seventh-day Adventists believe that God inspired Ellen G. White. Therefore, her expositions on any given Bible passage offer an inspired guide to the meaning of the text without exhausting their meaning or preempting the task of exegesis. Interesting. So the same spirit that inspired the scriptures also supposedly inspired the writings of Ellen White, and her exposition on any given passage offers an inspired guide, but she's not on par with scripture. Let's look at another article on their own website. This one's titled, Statement of Confidence in the Writings of Ellen G. White. Third paragraph, it says, We reaffirm our conviction that her writings are divinely inspired, truly Christ-centered, and Bible-based. Rather than replacing the Bible, they uplift the normative character of Scripture and correct inaccurate interpretations of it derived from tradition, human reason, personal experience, and modern culture. So notice, if your interpretation contradicts Ellen White, it's going to be labeled as tradition, human 
within reason, personal experience, and modern culture. Yet again, we see Mrs. White is the infallible interpreter. Now let's look at our first quote from Ellen White herself. All right, so look at this first heading. E.G. White work not unlike that of Bible prophets. In ancient times, God spoke to men by the mouth of prophets and apostles. In these days, he speaks to them by the testimonies of his spirit. For those that don't know, testimonies is oftentimes a shorthand phrase that is used to refer to her writings in general. So Ellen quoting Hebrews chapter one here replaces where it says, in these days, he speaks to them by the son, Christ, and puts in the testimonies. But she's not on par with scripture, remember. Let's look at the second heading. Scripture and spirit of prophecy have the same author. The Holy Ghost is the author of the scriptures and of the spirit of prophecy. Same author, folks, but not on the same level. Are you seeing the semantics and the slipperiness? So let's look at the next source. I'm in Pointed Testimonies in the Church, chapter 27. Those who are reproved by the Spirit of God should not rise up against the humble instrument, referring to herself. It is God, and not an erring mortal, who has spoken to save them from ruin. Those who despise the warning will be left in blindness to become self-deceived. So if you reject Ellen's words, you're gonna be self-deceived. But those who heed it, meaning her words, and zealously go about the work of separating their sins from them in order to have the needed graces, will be opening the door of their hearts that the dear Savior may come in and dwell with them. Let's look at the third quote. I'm in the testimony slided chapter five. Yet now when I send you a testimony of warning and reproof, many of you declare it to be merely the opinion of Sister White. You have thereby insulted the spirit of God. You know how the Lord has manifested himself through the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, for those that don't know, is a catchphrase that they use to refer to the writings of Ellen White. But remember, she's not on par with scripture. She's to be tested by scripture. But if you go against the spirit of prophecy, you're going against the spirit of God. Now let's look at the fourth quote. Same book, same chapter, different paragraph. If you seek to turn aside the counsel of God to suit yourselves, if you lessen the confidence of God's people in the testimonies he has sent them, you are rebelling against God as certainly as were Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. You have their history. You know how stubborn they were in their own opinions. They decided that their judgment was better than that of Moses and that Moses was doing great injury to Israel. Those who united with them were so set in their opinion that notwithstanding the judgments of God in the marked manner destroyed the leaders and the princes. The next morning, the survivors came to Moses and said, you have killed the people of the Lord. We see what fearful deception will come upon the human mind. How hard is it to convince souls that have become imbued with the spirit which is not of God? As Christ's ambassador, I would say to you, be careful what positions you take. This is God's work and you must render to him an account for the manner in which you treat his message. So just like Korah, Dathan, and Abiram went against God, if you go against Ellen, you're gonna be just like them. So be careful going against Mrs. White. Now let's go to a fifth quote. I'm in letter 90 from 1906. So this is towards the end of her life. How many have read carefully Patriarchs and Prophets, Great Controversy, and Desire of Ages? For those that don't know, these are probably her most prominent writings. I wish all to understand that my confidence in the light that God has given stands firm, because I know that the Holy Spirit's power magnified the truth and made it honorable, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. In my books, the truth is stated, barricaded by a thus saith the Lord. But remember folks, her writings aren't to be viewed as being on par with scripture, even though they're a thus saith the Lord. Christians, are you seeing the slipperiness of these people? Are you seeing that they will not be forthright and that they play these word games to try and make it seem like we're just like all Protestants. We just believe in scripture alone. Sola Scriptura, Sola Scriptura. No, they don't even know what Sola Scriptura means. Like everything else, they give it their own definition. As if this wasn't enough, now let's look at their Sabbath school quarterly. This is a quarterly in their archive. We've looked at stuff from the 1800s when Ellen White was writing. We've looked at stuff from the beginning of the 1900s. We're looking at something now from the 70s, and we've looked at stuff from modern day. We are covering a great expanse of time to show they've always taught this, they've always believed this, and they just change the way that they say things to try and pull the wool over people's eyes. How advantaged the Adventist church is to have a modern inspired interpreter of both the Old and New Testaments. Surely there's every logical reason to give the inspired interpretation top priority in arriving at our understanding of the word today. Doug, you are a liar. You know it, I know it, and now everyone else knows it. So is Doug the village idiot? 
Is this guy telling the truth or not? We didn't go to any sources outside of their own sources, but you were willing to lie to people to try and pass off as, oh no, we're just like all other Protestant churches. Cut the crap. We didn't all just get in some circle together and figure out what's the accusation that we're gonna make against them. The reason all former Adventists say this about you guys is because we were there. We saw how Ellen White functioned in the SDA church. We're not just making stuff up. You guys are so full of it. And if I sound a little worked up, I am, because this is a lie. It's deceiving people. You claim to be representatives of Jesus Christ. Stop lying. As you saw, folks, anyone with basic common sense and reading comprehension can see. You guys are saying it's the same spirit that inspired both. Ellen says if you question her, you're going against the spirit of God. You can't even use the scriptures to question her because she's the infallible interpreter. They will do anything to keep Ellen alive. And the more you dig into the movement, the more you'll see why. So if you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when content like this is uploaded. As always, until next time, God bless.